Uh, I guess for the sake of time, I guess that uh, two more people I will have to fast forward. So I would like to invite uh, Dr. Manish Karna uh, to his GM Business Development Acme Clean Tech. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody, and thank you uh, uh, for inviting me in this forum. Uh, I would uh, like to start with where Mr. Jain left. Uh, but before that, we need to understand that why we are talking about renewable and solar per se very, uh, you know, prominently, emphatically nowadays. It started in 2010. We are at 2017, <coughs> sorry. So during the journey, we have learned how to deal with solar power. The problem in dealing with solar power, when it started and when it started with wind or other renewable sources, it was a boon for, uh, for the areas where the, the electricity was not there. So everybody was so, uh, you know, overwhelming, so welcoming about uh, the renewable coming in, though it was very costly at that time. But uh, the availability of renewable power being a customized solution, particularly solar, was overwhelmed and welcomed. Now, when the quantum started happening, quantum started adding into the grid, people have started thinking about how to deal with solar power. Right? So, so that is when Everybody woke up and said, like, look, we have a plan for solar power, but we also need to have a plan to deal with solar power. So therefore, you know, learning of these six, seven years would come into the play. But the only caveat is there are certain stakeholders in the whole value chain who have learned to deal with solar power, but they are, they are still being, they are still being, uh, you know, uh, uh, influenced by the way thermal power plants are being treated. For example, I have also told this in one of the earlier forum, when one of your regulatory order says that solar has to develop, uh, demonstrate maximum continuous rating for 72 hours, that means some people have not learned it. And those people are into a decision making or a, an order making uh, you know, position. So therefore, the only caveat is that we have not been able to transform or we have not been able to educate everybody and it is a, it is a responsibility of a solar power developer and each and every stakeholder in the solar domain or a renewable domain for that matter to go and educate people that look the product is so totally different than uh, the product which we have been dealing since ages. So that is one thing which we need to do very actively because we are now transforming from intermittent power to to a very con, I mean uh, uh, to a ESS integrated or battery integrated solar power because the power is intermittent in nature. If this education does not happen, if this knowledge transformation does not take place, then the moving then moving in the next phase would be very difficult. Now. That is one thing which I thought I will share with the forum. Second thing, which I thought that, you know, when we were talking about solar or other renewable sources for that matter, largely all economy in the world, including India, were based on carbon-based economy. So we were, for energy requirement, we were dependent upon petroleum, we were dependent on, upon coal. They are the main energy sources for all human beings. Rest everything for all requirement of the human being was only a transformation of this energy to another form of energy. But this was mainly a carbon-based economy. Now, these are not infinite sources. These are finite, finite sources. So, this will not be there for, for the ages in future. This will, this will get depleted. So, if at all there's a time to deal with alternative sources, this is the time. And there's a time to experiment also. Because if we, if we miss this bus, this time, then we'll not have a time to experiment with alternative energy. So the alternative energies will be in the form of sun, wind, and hydro. They are the only infinite sources. Otherwise, there's no finite sources available. The whole world's politics moves around petroleum and coal. So if at all we need to deal, if at all we need to think, you'll have to think of an alternative sources right now. This is the place. We have not yet, we are not yet there. 
So we need to move from a carbon-based economy to non-carbon-based economy. And whatever we do in, in our whole, in, for all our energy needs is totally dependent on a carbon-based economy. Second, when we are thinking of using technologies in an affordable way, this is the time we need to move from a technology who is, who is based on zero marginal cost. Solar for say, per se is technically a zero marginal cost because whatever tariff is loaded is based on the capex, upfront, the capex promised upfront, right? There's no variable charges or variable charges are very less for that matter, only about 10 to 15% on module cleaning as such and module cleaning technologies are also evolving. So therefore, it is only a capex which then gets loaded in the tariff for 25 years on the cash flows basis, right? So, so the advantage solar gives is it does not have any marginal cost, whereas other conventional sources, I'm not against, I'm, I'm from a conventional uh, 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 sector, I'm not against it, but only only thing which I'm pointing out is we are moving from a marginal cost to a zero marginal cost and hence this renewable and solar per se is a right choice at this particular moment. Tomorrow it may happen that tomorrow some other technology will come and replace solar, but at least now and for, for near future, it is solar and other renewable sources based on these energy, infinite energy sources, which for which we'll have to work upon, which we'll have to be, which we'll have to deal with. Now, having said so, everybody knows in this forum or in this house that intermittency with renewable is a factor which everybody is worried about today. As we are talking about 60 gigawatt of grid connected large solar power plant and 40 gigawatt of rooftop. 40 gigawatt of rooftop will come mainly from a commercial angle. I mean commercial in the sense that if my electricity cost from the grid is higher than the cost of electricity of the solar rooftop, then I would switch to solar rooftop. Uh, of course, the other, the intermittency and uh, batteries and all will take place. But then this is a Whereas a ground mounted large solar power plants are based on the push factor. This is a pull factor wherein you require electricity. So you are searching for alternate source of energy, electricity. Large scale ground mounted solar is a push right now from the government in terms of RPO. But is it going to the same in near future? I, my personal view is it is not going to be the same. Today, everything is all right. Every, there's a push from the government. The policies are right. The environment is perfectly fine. The raw materials are being sourced from different countries, including China at a very competitive rate. Everything is all right. But I do not see this is going to happen. This is going to last for another couple uh, more years. As we have seen, uh, Mr. Jain was talking about BIS. BIS guidelines are i'm sorry to say but a non tariff barrier so therefore what we are talking about is indigenous technology based solar pv being procured from you know a local which is a good thing but then when we are talking about this we also need to think about that if the technology is not affordable it is only r and d it is not a technology so when you are when you have to when your ultimate product is your electricity, if you cannot sell your electricity at an affordable price to our end consumer, then whatever you do is only a push and push does not last for very long. It only lasts for a, as far as the push is there, right? And for every push, there's a cost and government is not ready to pay a cost only for push. It has to sustain on its own. So that is second thing, which I thought that I'll bring to this forum. I'm not against, uh, the India has to rely upon Make in India and technologies uh, developed indigenously and India is doing very well. We have to reach there. So till, when, till the time we have reached there, we need to be very cautious on what we are doing. Second is GST, I do not know. I do not have an answer today because there's so much of confusion about the GST rates. I do not understand that Every other technology which is producing electricity 
are kept in one bracket and solar being singled out at least for some of the items which is uh, and i'm sure government is also working on that thinking that and going to go going to give clarification but why there's a need of clarification if you have to treat everything in the same at the same uh, level playing field so that means there's something which is happening which we are not able to understand we need to be very careful about it in the future so a non tariff barrier in terms of bis a gst which is i do not know i uh, it, the government has to clarify on in a near future but then having said so ess is going to play a very major role in times to come because you do not have uh, any other you're not going to have any other alternative source of energy other than solar and wind so battery has to be integrated to make sure that the grids are safe it is it is run on the basis on the principles on which it was designed and and i'm sure government is also working towards it but then when i'm talking about the ess or the batteries the batteries are not only a localized batteries integrated with the solar power plant the batteries roles would more towards for example if you have india is a huge nation right so a load in the eastern part is based on a sun movement so load on the eastern part and the load in the western part the peak load will have at least half an hour lag so there will be a change of the power number when there will be a change of power number you need to manage those power numbers when you are integrating grid from eastern region to western region so therefore the batteries will have to play a role in managing those power numbers at the regional periphery whatever is going to happen with the solar pv power plant the generating station is only a localized solution localized solution will take place it it has to take place but then as a for a larger interest the ess and the batteries has to be used at the regional periphery to manage the load numbers or to manage the power numbers third the use of ess generally whenever we are saying the ess is only used as a power backup whereas the application of ess is not a power backup it is an energy backup so we one need to be very careful about if you are using the power backup it cannot today as for sure it cannot sustain as, on the commercial basis so when you are using a technology be very careful on what purpose and what application you are using the technology for if you are using a 100 megawatt solar pv power plant and using a backup of 100 megawatt ess it does not make a technological sense it does not make a commercial sense it can only be used for the transient condition or a load shifting for that matter or it can only be used during the light light uh, you know night loads and light loads for that for that matter so the application of ess has to has to be kept in mind when you are using ess technologies as far as supplying electricity is concerned and so not supplying power is concerned so with these thoughts i would like to thank you eq and uh, uh, i would like to thank you uh, mr ravi khanna and the forum in the house thank you so much and have a lovely day ahead thank you manish a uh, couple of points which uh, i think are very very obvious moving forward to all of us uh, the issue of integration of this volume migration of loads um, we just talked about rajasthan having such large capacity and will continue to have even larger capacities how does that state you know interlink with different load patterns of user states uh, we we did get some feedback um, seven to eight months back about how, there were some rumblings in rajasthan and, and right now i think they're better planned but in moving forward it's a very big take away how are we going to manage that to that extent i think this is a very valid reminder for all of us to plan for it in whichever way we can and also in policy making forums uh, we need to ex explicitly demand uh, some kind of protection framework and capital spending uh, which solar as an industry will require to make it more i would say reliable more sustainable 
So uh, thank you, thank you, Manish, for this. I would now invite uh, Raghunath Mahapatra. And my request uh, for the remaining speakers is that we will go five to seven minutes now, uh, looking at uh, how our schedule is going right now. So would be grateful if five to seven minutes we maintain. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, everyone. Sir Ravi, colleagues on the dais, and thank you, EQ, for giving this opportunity to put a few words uh, that might be considered. I think uh, Manish has covered from a lot of points, but since this is a technology forum, um, having been in this sector for last um, seven to eight years now, uh, I have only one first point is that uh, the technology in, uh, in, in uh, solar is still not understood correctly. Um, the main thing that goes into the project, that's modules and inverters. They are um, essentially evolving at a very fast rate. And now there is talk of uh, integration of the inverters into the module themselves so that we don't have to put those central inverters. So technological shifts are happening. So let's focus on the generation side. And uh, a lot of things, this is, although this sector has been brought up by IPPs mostly, it is still driven by policy 100%. We depend on bids. And that is one thing which um, has its own issues. As we don't understand the technology completely, as Manish said, it's, we are as a throwback. The people who do the policies, they are mostly from thermal background. Most of us are from thermal background, thermal hydro, whatever. So it's just five, seven years. And um, we don't have so much focus on the technology so that people understand it. And who has to understand the technology, not the engineers per se, but the policymakers, the bankers, the financiers, the people who put money. So what we are doing now is we are trying to understand that, okay, this is a technology which is tested in lab because unlike uh, thermal or any other technology, old technologies, we don't have that experience of seeing, having seen uh, the solar on the ground for the 25 years that we are pro everybody is promising, including it starts with the model manufacturers with the warranties, guarantees, so we'll see how it evolves. Plus, um, there is a tariff pressure. Now it becomes commercial because technology will not stand alone on its own. So there is a tariff pressure. So what people are trying to do is trying to understand if the technology itself can go down in price so that they can factor in. Now what happens is in the solar thing, at least as, it, as the technology exists now in a solar project, it's either silicon or metals. There is not more, much more of it, other than the buildings and other things, which is around 10 to 12% of the cost. 60% is silicon, that is your uh, modules. Electronics, another 7%. And then it is either copper or steel or insulation. These are the four or five things. And the price of the copper and steel, they are not solar focused. So they are not going to come down in the near future, at least the indication that comes out from LME and other places. So we'll have to see how to match that. The expectation of ministry is that the price will come down. And it has to come down and down and down and that's what, and it is going down. So ministry is saying, okay, you guys are coming and putting the uh, price. So we are not responsible for it. But probably the BIS and other things, the past has not been very encouraging, but hopefully they will bring in the technology so there is at least a minimum quality that can be, uh, Put in place then we will know what the real price is today i am free to choose any module which i don't know if it will work for 25 years uh, i'm not talking about myself i'm saying in general the industry because we take a great care most of the big players are taking great care and they're under severe stress so that's one part of the thing now if we go the, to the demand side demand is there is, is, is a well-known figure. 300 million people in India do not have access to electricity. So energy access and energy security, if we look at that, I think the grid 
Today, the grid is designed in a manner that is again, it has taken 100 years to evolve. So that means produce as much as you can at one place and transmit, take it to as far as possible through a long line. And that has taken to reduce the losses. You have to go on voltage upgradation from 1000 volt, then 1500 volt and everything. So fundamentally, now if we think probably one of the thing which we should be focusing on is, I'm not getting into the rooftop and other things that has been already spoken about, probably smart grid, probably microgrids, and uh, with the ESS, because people need light electricity in the night. And now the storage, storage is as we know, again, it is stuck in the old days, zinc, the zinc is better. Lithium ion is the only flavor of the time, but the costs, they are not making sense till now. It has to come down, what I'm, I'm told, has to come down to around $150 per kilowatt. It's, it's stuck in the range of around 300 kilowatt because the R&D costs are being loaded. We don't have. So what we do is we do good manufacturing. So we manufacture a lot of things. If we go this way from technological angle, one is the silicon and these batteries, 25 years down the line, we will have a lot of land which will not be usable, a lot of silicon, we don't know how to recycle them, and lots of batteries. So that's an environmental issue I just want to flag. But that's it, I'm saying that has to be there, there has to be some solution. I hope someone somewhere is looking at it. So probably the future of the grid is not to be the centralized generation and then taking it the farthest corner possible through a wire. Rather, if we can have smart things which can manage the grid, and that there comes your forecast. Somehow wind, although we know that we can't predict when the wind will come, that's being forecasted. But solar, till now, it's not possible to forecast so easily. So that is something if the forecasting can be brought in, then I can plan and design a system which will probably, I can fit either a storage or my generation or my planning, everything I can do and the system operator. I mean, again, their names have not been upgraded to system operator. They're still dispatching load, right, by names. So probably they will have a better grip over the thing. So probably generation side, so summarizing, I, there are a lot of, I will not talk about GST because uh, again, uh, mostly there is one thing we'll have to do on this. Essentially, we are evolving. We are experimenting. We are trying to find out what will happen. So on the generation side, we'll have to see what technology will come and how it will be using less land, less resource, less water, so that we remain focused on that without consuming too much of natural resource, we can still be uh, using uh, whatever is available and efficiency has to be high. So high efficiency, from the generation side, plus an integration kind of thing. On grid side, actually, we'll have to probably distribute it over the people who need electricity. And uh, IT has to take probably a lead role in the technology. And uh, today, the main integrating factor, since it is driven still by policy, the policy is still fragmented. And we are going also another thing, just I'll put, I'm not sure how much is applicable here. We are focusing on solar and wind. Maybe we should focus on even biomass in a proper manner. The technology has improved, possibly. And that is uh, polluting, but then at least it is somewhat perennial. Um, second thing is other technologies like geothermal. And we are thinking of producing more and more electricity to fulfill the demand because we, we are not able to do that. Possibly we can think of reducing the demand because geothermal is, can, is not only used for generating electricity. That can be very well used for uh, cooling as well. So if, and a lot of our load as of now and is going to be in future is going to come from conditioning of the climate. And if we can manage that through something else, probably we, don't, we won't be needing to generate so much. So from generation and grid side, I will not touch distribution because that's a different topic altogether. So I think that's where I will leave it. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you for your patience and listening and thank you UQ for inviting me. Have a good day.
Thank you, Raghunath. I, I again we believe two of the ma main points, uh, which really blend and which is very nicely elaborated, are policy driven, and uh, I think uh, bidding is one part of the policy. Uh, how technology gets into the, I would say, qualification aspect of it reliability and technology, how they are inbuilt into a selection process. Uh, now, if we take that one step forward, and he talked about microgrids, uh, too many homes in this country don't have power. Uh, on one hand, we are talking about intermittent nature of solar and uh, the challenges they will provide. The DISCOMs have a a little bit of a concern about that. Now, if we are, we need to, first of all, we need to take some lessons as to the countries who have 20, 30, 40, 50 gigawatt already installed. What are they doing to absorb so much solar? What are their policies? I guess uh, it's the same way, like uh, Germany took 15 years to get into those ground mounted megawatt style projects we started from we did that in a, i think a couple of years and we've been running with those now how how they will be absorbed so microgrids eye landing united states is absorbing so much of solar power but when you go deeper down and see how they are you know the utilities are working in tandem uh, a lot of eye landing is done through microgrids they consume what they can the balance goes to the grid and they are balanced with that appropriately with this kind of a software. So I guess these things need very serious intervention because uh, we, we can have a blame game tomorrow about intermittent solar, so much in capacity, rather than having the same gigawattage being used within the country uh, in a far more technically relevant manner. Australia, look, look at what happened this first quarter. West, Southern Australia had a major grid breakdown because temperatures reached a level which Australia had never seen. So there was a grid failure. And uh, no large electrical company worldwide ever likes to be pointed a finger on. It's, 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 it's a history. You, you talk about any power company which is big, they, they, they are an institution in themselves. They've started blaming renewables that so much solar rooftop has come, so much wind has come, and that's why the grid collapsed. The finding, autonomous finding which came out, they realized that heat induced certain things in the grid, and the grid was designed some 60 years back. It could not take the differential of that situation, and it collapsed. It was not the renewables. So I guess before we get into some kind of a situation of this kind here, and I think we, are, we will get into it. I think our policy framework, as he suggests, should start uh, introducing some of these things. And that, that's the far more stable approach to do. So thank you for your inputs.